Hi there, welcome to The Peaceful Home. I'm Teresa Elling. If you are new here, welcome. I'm so glad you joined me today for this episode on dealing with paperwork. Now, my previous video was 10 things I do every January to get organized for the new year. And one of those things is going through paperwork. A lot of times we can address maybe one aspect of our paperwork and we never really know exactly what we have and where it all is. This system might seem a little intensive to you, but I promise if you will put in the time, you will have complete control of your paperwork, you will know where everything is, and you will have a system to keep it organized. Imagine needing to get an important document like a birth certificate or a passport, or school records, or a prescription, or even the article that you clipped about the best camping spots in your state. With this system, you would be able to access that information within minutes. You would be able to go exactly to where it's located and pull it out so quickly. I don't want you to be discouraged with the task before you. I know it seems like a lot, but the thing is we can fool ourselves into thinking that we don't really have all this paperwork or this is too complicated of a system. All it is is sorting into like piles and you can do that, I promise. But deciding it's too complicated and then doing nothing is going to mean you have miscellaneous boxes and bins of paperwork who knows where in your house. This works if you have no system at all or if you do have a system and you just need to do your yearly maintenance. The first step is to gather all of the paper you have in your entire home. I gathered all the paperwork in my home and brought it down to my living room so that I could spread everything out, make piles, do my sorting. It's just a lot easier that way. And even when I thought I had every stitch of paper in my house, I remembered my real estate files. You know, if you buy or sell a home, they don't use letter size paper, they use legal size and you get these giant folders. And so I have got these huge documents that don't fit in my file cabinet and they are so bulky. So we're gonna talk about what to do with these, but I forgot I even had them. I could give you a lot of options of different ways you can do this, but I think the best thing is just to show you exactly what my process is and then you can tweak it however it fits your needs. If you've got a dry erase board or a piece of paper, grab that, we're going to be taking some notes. As you're gathering your paperwork from all over the house, I want you to write down what type it is and where it was stored. So I'm gonna go through my list with you. First off, I have recipes, grocery lists, meal planning, that type of paper, and that is all in one spot in my kitchen in a drawer. The second type of paperwork is in my keepsake box. Now that is anything that I want to use to remember people and events from my past. So greeting cards, theater tickets, photos, little mementos, those all go in my keepsake box. That we keep in our master closet. Another type of paperwork is tax returns. And I have my last seven years filed in an accordion file and I keep that in my office. As Soon as I put the previous year in, I take the oldest year and remove it and shred it or burn it. Also, watch at the very end of this video. Um, you can scroll forward if this is the main information you want. I will have a list of how long to keep each type of paperwork. And then I have a few binders. Now this is in lieu of having a file. I actually put certain information into a three week binder. I keep these binders and notebooks in my office on a shelf and I have three of them. I have the Christmas one, I have um, my financial binder, it has all of our finances in there. I'm actually going to do a video on that to explain to you how I put that together. It's probably my most crucial binder and also one for my business. I keep my previous year's planner and uh, again, I will link below the 10 things that I do every January where I talk about combining my previous planners and calendars into one log, and that is this one. So I have that, my end of the year log, and I also have a travel log. 
And I know that's kind of nerdy and I haven't actually done a lot of traveling, but it's been really fun to be able to look back on a vacation and be reminded of maybe a restaurant we went to or a place that we visited. And sometimes it's helpful when I can't remember the name of something, I'm able to look it up. Next is my file box. Uh, maybe you have a file cabinet or a plastic tote that has your files in it. I just have this little cardboard box and it works great for me. I also have all of my warranty information and instruction manuals in a basket that's in my office along with my file box. And lastly, the real estate files that I was telling you about. Those are kept in my office as well. You only need to keep real estate information for homes you currently own. Now, if you sold the home or paid off a previous mortgage, having a payoff statement is a good thing to keep in your file, but you don't need to keep that entire file of all of that bulky paperwork. It could be shredded. My file box was my main goal to go through this last weekend. I spent an entire Saturday going through all of this paperwork and every single file. But if you can't set an entire day aside, just try one hour a night and plug through going through all of this paperwork and getting rid of the stuff that you no longer need. I wanna talk for just a minute about instruction manuals. You can get almost any manual for anything online. From something as simple as a child's game to your automobile. So there really is no reason to keep instruction manuals. The only ones I keep are ones that I regularly use. So this is one area where you can clear out a ton of paperwork that most likely you will never look at. And if you did need to look at it, it would be available for you online. If there is specific warranty information, you do wanna make sure you keep at least one sheet of your model numbers, uh, possibly a purchase receipt, and the phone number of where to access the company if you need to make a claim. In part two, I'm going to show you how all of your paper is going to come in through your inbox, go through your active files, and then to more long-term storage. Let's take a look at some of the footage of all of the sorting that I did yesterday, and then I'll come back and I'll talk to you a little bit more about it. I just came downstairs so that I have plenty of room to spread out on the floor and I can make piles and it just makes it go much faster. I'm going to walk you through step by step whether you have absolutely no system or you already have a system in place. I go through each file and every single piece of paper deciding whether I'm going to keep it or toss it. The toss stuff put in a pile and the keep stuff should be sorted into like items together. Two rules of thumb are, could I access this information online? And if I had a fire, would I be devastated and need to replace this? I just finished going through almost every file except for this stack. And these are my homeschool records. And I'm going to take some time later, I'm gonna put this aside as a separate project to really go through get rid of some of the stuff that legally I don't have to keep anymore and compile everything to one homeschool memorabilia file. And this is the pile I ended up with. This is my trash pile. So I'm super excited to see all of this paper go away. Um, a lot of it that should be shredded is actually going to be burned. I'll just burn that in our fireplace but um, anything else can be tossed. Of course, if you've got plastic in an envelope, you don't wanna burn that. Um, and you certainly can shred any valuable information and toss the rest. Now I'm going to show you what I do with my stack that was actually in my temporary action file to be filed. So these are things that need to go in my file box when I take the time to go through them, sort them and put them away. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to imagine that I have no system in place whatsoever, and I just have paper clutter everywhere. You're going to take your stack like this and you're going to start to go through it, getting rid of anything you don't need, obviously, and then sorting into piles that you will need files for eventually. So this is a card from some friends that's going to go to my keepsake. Oh, this is actually an organizing file that never got put in with my files. Same with this one. This is my husband's file. It must have gotten pulled out for something and just not put back. 
that'll get put away. Another card, photos. Let's see, this is a medical paper. And actually I noticed when I was going through my files, I don't have any kind of medical file. And really thank God for that because we haven't had any reason to have a medical file. But this was um, some lab results that need to be saved. So I'm going to start a file for that. This is another um, wedding itinerary. It's the rehearsal day schedule, the wedding day schedule, kind of how we um, let everyone know what was going on. Really fun to look through that. That will go in memorabilia. Thank you notes, letter. My husband is a chiropractor and he has to do relicensing hours every single year and we have to keep track of those. So that's going to go in his file. This is a purchase receipt and information on one of my husband's guitars. And so this could either go with warranty information, instruction manuals, or it can go in his file. I think because this is so specific to him, he's gonna want it in his own file. This is a receipt for some car repairs we had done. If you keep receipts like this, make sure that you have an auto file and you would file it in there. There's quite a few keepsake things. Anytime I have a card, a note from someone, I just put it in to be filed. And then when that gets full and I need to sort, then this stuff goes to its proper spot. A financial document that needs to be saved. It was a loan payoff. <laughs> this is from a women's retreat we did last January, Vision 2020. And we have laughed about it many times as we set aside this weekend to set goals and really seek the Lord for the year 2020. And obviously none of us had any idea what this year would be like. And here's my auto file actually. So I'm going to put those repair slips and receipts in there. One of my best tips, if you are filing cards, if they're in a box, you can just leave them as they are. But if you're putting them in a file, it's best to open them fully and lay them as flat as possible so they don't take up as much room. This is ideas for river trips. So river rafting, and um, I pulled this out of Sunset Magazine, and I have a vacation ideas file, so it's going to go in there. But again, if you didn't have a file yet, you would just be making piles like this. And then what I do is I take a stack of index cards and I begin to categorize these things. So I'm going to do that really quick just to show you what that looks like. I'll be back in a minute. Once you've made the cards, they're gonna look something like this. You'll just have all your individual piles and you'll have them labeled so you know what kind of boxes, bins, or files you will need for all of this paperwork. I also wanted to talk to you briefly about how to label things. So for example, this file could be labeled medical, it could be labeled health, the key is what would you think when you have something that you want to file, where does your mind go? And use that word or phrase. Once you decide on your categories, you either need to handwrite them, which mine were handwritten for years. This is the first time I decided to take the time and do some labels on my labeler. And I didn't even get new file folders. I just put them right over the handwritten labels. I also don't use a Pendaflex label where you basically have a double labeling system. This is just easier for me. I do not get into these files very often. These really are long-term files. 
One of the most common things I see with clients that are struggling with a mountain of paperwork is they just keep too much and it's unnecessary. In particular, utility bills, um, bank statements, bills for years, credit card statements. Now again, you need to keep them maybe for the month and then as soon as you get a new statement, you can shred that old one. Most people are paperless now, which means you don't need to have the paperwork at all. And at the end of the year, you can print out one end of year statement to have with your tax records. But saving all of that, um, all of that stuff every single month, it just piles up the clutter. You also don't need to save most things that come in folders like this. When you open a bank account, get rid of the folder, keep one sheet with the most important information, your account numbers, um, login information, and that's it. The rest can go. So I will transfer this now to a piece of paper in my planner so I will know where all of my paperwork is. The other thing that's important is for other family members, if they're looking for something, or in the event of your death, someone would be able to find all relevant paperwork. I can't tell you how rewarding it is to know that I have gone through every piece of paperwork. I have made some changes, and so I've noted them here so I could talk to you about them. The first one is that all of my warranty information and instruction manuals were in this basket, and I have completely eliminated that by um, downsizing them and transferring them to a file in my file box. So I don't have to have this taking up space in my office anymore. Number two, the real estate files, the legal size ones like this, are being moved out of my office and into my master closet. And lastly, I've set a goal to take my documents file, and that has all of our birth certificates, social security cards, that type of stuff, and I'm going to get a fireproof safe, and then those will get moved to the safe. So that's a goal I'm setting. I'll need to make sure to write that down in my planner so I don't forget. Hopefully this will inspire you to set some goals January or February as part of getting organized for the new year to go through all of your paperwork, or at least sort it to a point where you know where it all is. And then maybe you can actually go through and declutter throughout the year. As soon as I film the part two, I will link that below so that you can watch both videos back to back to get a complete overhaul of all of your paperwork. Thank you so much for joining me on The Peaceful Home. Have a great day.